Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. So normally with these videos we like to do a bit of a crash course, but for today, much like we did with the Infernoble videos, if you're familiar with those that we've done, we're going to go for something a little bit more lengthy. I am going to try and break this up into chapters. I believe YouTube has a function for this. At worst case scenario, I'll drop some timestamps in the comments so you can skip through or even watch the video in chunks because it will be quite a long one, but it is going to be worth it, I promise. We've got a very experienced player with this deck coming on to assist me in this video. But I'll stop waffling, let's get stuck right into the video. Altergeist debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Circuit Break in October 2017, which strangely enough is when I came back to the game playing Yu-Gi-Oh! after roughly an eight year hiatus from the competitive game. The archetype is piloted by Emma Besso, or Ghost Gal from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrain series. The monsters are based on some sort of mythological looking ghost like creatures and their names are wordplay based on the word poltergeist with geist meaning something close to spirit, ghost, mind or intellect in German. They are individually named as a combination of a mythological creature combined with computing terminology. For example, Hextia is a combination of Hestia and Hexadecimal and Meluseek being a combination of Melusine and Zeroseek. We won't go into too much detail on these though. The deck has seen a great variety of success, topping and winning countless regionals, the German Nationals in 2019, piloted by Jack Verma, and even YCS Sydney, piloted by Honor Giza. So what are the things that make people love and hate Altergeist, and how does it play? Altergeist can often be described as an incredibly frustrating deck to play against. Its main strengths lie in its ability to continually float, interrupt, and just generally be a pain in the ass to deal with. All the monsters, more or less, have some form of disruptive capability, negating, bouncing cards to their hand, stopping attacks, or sending them to the grave. The deck can also quickly build advantage if not managed carefully by an opponent, and it becomes incredibly resilient once it establishes its board. The deck has a heavy focus on traps, and naturally as a result can benefit hugely from making use of floodgates and other powerful support cards. The deck can lack some speed, but once it builds up steam, it tends to stop the opponent playing properly, making up for its slow build-up which relies on traps, and eventually it begins to apply pressure through cards such as Altergeist Hextia. The key to the deck performing well is resource management and understanding the opponent's best strategies to know when to interrupt. The deck is sometimes dismissed as a low skill helmet deck because of its use of floodgates, but with the right pilot it has a high ceiling and can be capable of playing against even the best meta decks. As a note on some weaknesses, the deck being trap based can indeed be a little bit slow and so playing second can be problematic. The deck also relies largely on targeting removal so can struggle to deal with cards such as the Black Luster Link. Back row hate can be an obvious problem, as can beat sticks, since the deck largely has low attack monsters. The deck is usually built to try and mitigate these issues as much as possible, but this is just further testament to the resourcefulness required to compete with this deck as a whole. For the next part, we're going to run through the relevant cards for the deck. We're not going to go into any detail on cards that don't really see any play, since we'll be better off using this time to focus on what matters. As with all of these videos, I'll be glossing over effects somewhat, however the cards will be shown on the screen so you can read everything as needed correctly, although given that we're all Yu-Gi-Oh players, you likely won't be reading a fucking thing. So we start off with Altergeist Melusik. It can attack directly. When it inflicts battle damage to the opponent, you can target and send a card they control to the graveyard. If it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add an Altergeist monster from the deck to the hand except for Melusik. This effect is a hard once per turn. After that we have Altergeist Sequoitus. Quick effect, you can bounce one other Altergeist you control to the hand, and then target and bounce a card your opponent controls. If it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add a Geist Trap from your graveyard to your hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Next we have the recently unlimited Altergeist Multifaker. If you activate a trap except during the damage step, you can special summon it from the hand. If it's special summoned, you can special summon another Geist from the deck in defense mode except for Multifaker. 
You can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn that you activate this effect, except for Altergeist monsters. Each effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Altergeist Marionetta. When it's normal summoned, you can set an Altergeist trap from the deck. You can target an Altergeist you control and one Altergeist monster in your graveyard, send the first to the graveyard, and then special summon the other from the graveyard. You can only use this effect once per turn. And lastly, for our main deck monsters that are worth covering, we have Altergeist Conquery. When your opponent declares an attack, if you control an Altergeist card, you can special summon this card from the hand and then negate the attack. If it's special summoned, you can negate a face-up card your opponent controls whilst it and this monster are on the field. This is all that's really played from the main deck options in terms of monsters at least. Once Pukuri is dropped into the TCG, this will see some play, but we'll discuss this card in more detail later on during the deck profiles and combo tutorials. Next we're going to move on to the extra deck. The extra deck options worth discussing are very small in number. There's just a couple of in archetype links really to discuss here. There are more options available but none of them really see any significant play and to be quite honest with you only one of these ever really gets played as a three and one of them is a one of which is the last one that we'll discuss. So we start off with Altergeist Hextia. It requires two Altergeist monsters and it is a link to. It gains attack equal to the original attack of each Altergeist monster it points to. When a spell, trap, or spell and trap effect is activated, quick effect, you contribute an Altergeist monster that this card points to, negate the activation, and destroy that card. This is not a once per turn effect. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add an Altergeist card from the deck to the hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. And our much lesser played Altergeist Prime Banshee. It requires 2 plus Altergeist monsters and is a Link 3. During the main phase, quick effect, you contribute another Altergeist monster to special summon an Altergeist monster from your deck to a zone that this card points to. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add an Altergeist card from your graveyard to your hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. And we round off with the spells and traps. Wait, did I say spells? I mean traps. Just traps. We start off with Altergeist Manifestation. Target an Altergeist monster in the graveyard and special summon it in attack and then equip this card to it. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. You can banish this card from the graveyard, then add an Altergeist trap from the graveyard to the hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. Following on from that, we have Altergeist Protocol. The activation and effects of Altergeist cards activated on your field can't be negated. When your opponent activates a monster effect, you can send another Altergeist card you control to the graveyard to negate the activation and destroy it. You can only use this effect once per turn. We also have Altergeist Haunted Rock. If it's set by an Altergeist card, you can activate the turn that it is set. When this card resolves, send one Altergeist monster from your hand to the graveyard. When your opponent activates a trap, you can send one Altergeist from your hand to the graveyard to negate its effect and destroy it. Each effect is a hard once per turn. And lastly, we have an honorary Altergeist card, going a little bit away from things here. Normally I only cover the in-archetype support, but this one should really have had Altergeist written on it, but I've been told that that would have been terrible for all involved, except for the people playing with the deck. Personal spoofing. Once per turn, you can shuffle one Altergeist card from your hand or face up from the field into the main deck and add one Altergeist monster from your deck to your hand. And that is a conclusive lineup of the spells and traps that are, at least I should say, in archetype for the deck that you would use. We are going to discuss some other options in the next part of the video with some deck lists and even some combo tutorials. Hi guys, so we've got Adam Black here, one of the uh, tuggers. I decided to bring him in. Uh, he's tried to play a few different decks. However, it never really works out for him. <laughs> he always ends up... <laughs> Back with Altergeist, and of course, now with Multi Faker at three, he's even more lit. So, oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he's happy. So, tell us a little bit about your experience of the deck, who you are, uh, and your successes, and that kind of thing that you've seen with it so far. So, I've played the deck since November 2018 after tilting off Sky Striker because I didn't draw Ray enough. Because <laughs> it's Striker, is what you do. So, now I just get tilted when I don't draw Faker. <laughs> Nothing changes. Um, yep. 
played at four uh, what, four YCSs last year. Played at all, and nationals and Euros as well. So a fair amount of testing with it. Yeah. Uh, obviously top the regional. Um, that you can check out the video for on, on Joe's here. channel on here, of course. Yeah, sh- shameless plug. Uh, I'll st- I'll Not stick a link in the uh, in e- I'll either pop one of them things up on screen that prompts you or whatever. People can go have a look and hear some other theory behind your choices in the deck as well. Yeah, um, and also got top 128 at UK Nats last year, just bubble, bubble top 64. Sucks. But... Yeah, you were pretty close, weren't you? Oh, it, was, it was unlucky. <laughs> it does happen, though, doesn't it? <laughs> so, okay, yeah. fine. So Adam's got a little bit of experience with the deck, as I say, played it to death, much to my dismay, because I fucking hate Altergeist, and <laughs> that's controversial considering you're watching a video that I'm making about Altergeist, but... Uh, yeah, the irony of that. The irony of that, <laughs> but uh, we need those views, and we need you to click, so thank you, it's too late, you've already committed by this stage, so thank you very much. <laughs> um, no, it's, it, it's, it's all good, because... Um, you know what, uh, you don't get better at decks unless you understand how they work. So this is a little bit of a learning curve for me as well. Um, yeah. So I can learn a little bit more about the deck as well. And of course, it's always good to to be able to help the community a little bit and give people some ideas of what to do. But anyway, I'll stop waffling because I can easily talk about me for ages. So let's talk a little bit through your list. So uh, we'll start off with the monsters. Let's go with Kunkri then. So you only run one copy of this. In fact, let let, let me just make a quick disclaimer first because you never know when people are going to watch these videos. Um, These these example deck lists are not always going to be perfect. It's worth noting that people get experimental, but also in a weird time where there's not really a format because there's no physical game. Um, so it's a bit, a bit of a weird spot, but also, you know, you should really take these as just kind of guidance and yeah, and, and build right. your own version. There's going to be things that you don't agree with and things that you do and whatever. But just 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 a quick disclaimer. So we're going to start off anyway. So you got one Kunkri. Yeah. So so one Kunkri. The great thing about Geist is that it's very flexible format to format. It does the same thing pretty much every format. It's just depending on what text you want to play, and that's what's one of the reasons I really like it is that it's so adaptable. Yeah. Is that this because there's so many cards that, that you can play that just help with different matchups and whatever is popular at the time, you just play to, to play against that. Yeah. So we start off with one country. You can play two. I did play two when I topped uh, Stevenage um, yeah. for the extra names because um, obviously it has good um, synergy with spoofing. But we did also have less faker then as well, right? We, we did. So so that's the, that's the difference now is so one country will. Um, is more than enough that you need. As much as I love two country, I think it's it's so fun revealing pot of du- revealing one off pot of duality and having another one in hand. <laughs> it's it like it's just it's those mind games and it, it's it's I love it. It's my favorite part. <laughs> um, so moving on from that, we got three marionette. Some people play two, and they're wrong. Okay, so um, what is it the marionette does? So, so let, let's assume I'm a complete idiot who has no idea how this deck works. So what is it that makes marionette good? So Marionette gets your important traps, the ones that you can recycle every turn. Yeah. Um, so when it's normal summoned, you can set one Altergeist trap directly from your deck. Um, which, it, that in itself is amazing, but also has a second effect, which can also special summon Altergeist from Grave by sending any Altergeist card on the field to the graveyard. Okay. So if you've used the Faker in Grave, special summon it back and get a free summon. If you've got, if they have a, an annoying Floodgate, like um, if they chain something like Tikaboo or goes a match to it, you still resolves because it's an and if and if you do effect. Yeah. Um. So you can summon Melaseek. Okay. And so it allows you to cycle through your deck a lot quicker and also deal with problem stuff with Melaseek and Silk as well. So the, the next card that we play is three Melaseek. Card's um, really strong. It's just really strong. It's genuinely the best card in the deck. Low key. Like every, everyone thinks Faker because it has it. it it allows the, all the plays during your opponent's turn. Seek is the best card. Um, the non-destruction sent descending to the graveyard is insane. That mm-hmm. they can't chain two half the time because it's in damage depth. Yeah. Um, the fact that you can just poke as well. So if you're ever like, there's ever a, like, a big monster that you just can't get around. You have Kunkri in hand, and you can loop the Kunkri. You can just keep poking them with Melody for game. I've done that a couple of times at locals. Where someone just sits on like a Diabolos or something. Yeah. And you just summon three Melody, you can just keep poking for game. 1500 every turn. It's basically <laughs> Sky Striker. You also do bullshit uh, stuff like linking it off with Linker Ebo. Yeah, you've got, you've got that stuff. But <laughs> generally, um, I, I I rarely make Linker Ebo now. It's it's just never worth it. Because the strength of Geist is that it doesn't really lose to any hand traps. Yeah. 
you think of all the popular hand traps right now, Vela, Nibiru, Ash Blossom, Diddy Crow, Ghost yeah. Mourner, none of them really lose to... Um, or Geist doesn't really lose to any of them. Yeah. So you can just sort of play through it also. It, and Phantasma as well, because Phantasma is a, really pro a real problem card for the deck. Yeah. If, like, if you if you made that Link Reaver turn one and they have Phantasma, you're like, uh, how do I out this? Yeah, it's it's one of those things like I know whenever I've played against guys, like if I'm running a deck that has the BLS link in it, the first thing I do is make the BLS link. Mm -hmm. Like and then I'm just like, okay, now what? Now what do you do? And a lot of the time that'll win you the game. Um yeah. especially if they they've already, you know, sort of seen a few resources and uh yeah. it, 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 it's kind of one of the, the crutches of the deck, I guess. Yeah. It it has really weird cards that it just cannot out. Um and then moving on from Triple Melzy, we've got Triple yep. Faker, the bread and butter. This is the extension, the starter, everything you could want in a, in a card, pretty much. And so you'd agree that three is like an absolute must run? If, if you're not playing three, you're stupid. <laughs> I, I will insult every dumb alter guys player out there. <laughs> like, for, So when Faker, for, for, like, you, you can play it, like, we played it on one for a while, and you just learn to adapt to keep the Faker and just keep re recycling it. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have to. We can just keep spamming it. Like you evenly matched. If you, if you get evenly matched with Faker on the field, you don't care anymore because you've got two more in deck that you can just search out. Yeah, that does make sense. While, while before, if you got evenly matched or if it got called by the Graved when it was in Graveyard, DD Crowed, mm -hmm. anything like that, you, you, you pretty much would lose the game from there yeah. because you can't push. While now you can just sort of go, okay, cool. I'll just get another Faker. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's all fine. Um, moving on from Faker, you've got Silk, which is the one that everyone hates for some reason. Oh, man. It's do you know what? It's the one, like, Concrete's kind of annoying. Faker, Marionette, and Melusi don't really bother me. I always seem to be able to deal with those okay. But the Silk bounce, 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 bounce. Oh, my God. It does my head in. Does mm -hmm. my head in. It's like the first. And do you know what? It's probably, like, it's such a mind game card to play against. Because you're like, yeah. I know if I do this, you're just gonna bounce it, and it just it it gets people skin. Like it gets my back up a lot of the time. If I get tilted against Soul guys, it's Silk that does it. Yeah. So the important the important thing with Silk is that the return to hand from your side of the field is a cost. Yeah. And that that is so much interplay with the deck because it allows you to play around so many stuff like skill drain, um, loads of different stuff that just like impermanence, um, effect veiler that you can just like just bounce it back to your hand because it's a quick effect you can just chain to it yeah. which is absolutely beautiful and then it also has the bounce effect as well which sometimes can just win you the game like you have hands when you play against salad where um, you just bounce their first card and they look at the hand and go i have no extension from this and just lose you know if they start with the normal summon they're normally in like a rough position <laughs> yeah, if they, if they go like normal summon effect of Foxy and use use the effect of Excavate Three and they don't hit anything off of it, like it's half the time I'm kind of inclined to just go bounce and just see how it goes. Yeah, especially if I've got other backup on top of it. And so that that's the old guys lineup. That's the twelve cards that you pretty much have to play. And and you like think that, that those ratios are kind of the one to go with? I think majority. Yeah, um, I can see an argument for a second Conqueror. Yeah, I, I really do. And I can, I can see this argument for a second Marionette, but it's just not good. Like, I'd rather have the continuous recursion and having the names for Faker. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because if you, if you don't see Faker, you don't win. That's pretty much how it goes. Nine out of ten times. So, next one to the hand traps. So, currently I'm playing a lot of hand traps because of how the, the format, in air quotes, is, is going with the Synchro Engine and Adamant's Payer and all that needle fiber. So... I mean, Shanigan. for the for this for the majority of it, I guess it's I guess the hand traps are pretty self explanatory. Like from a uh, Ash is the best, uh, Vale is just really strong. Nibiru is like pretty much a must run in this format. Yeah, so I've always run Ash. I think at least three Ash because uh, it's always incredible. Yeah, and I've always I've always liked to play a second like monster hand trap because as you know, guys plays in permanence as well because the imp faker combos, Broken. which is. is <laughs> yeah, I, I low-key hate it. Yeah, but it's so strong. Like, yeah, it's so so strong that you can't not do it is, is the problem. Yeah. Uh, I especially love doing it in end phase. That, that's my favorite time to do it, especially on like just anything, just bait something out in the end phase and just summon the faker. Yeah. And so, so I like I like playing that second hand trap. So like I've played DD Crow in the past. I've played Ghost Ogre. 
um, so this is one of those currently. flex spots, right? This is one that could be like format dependent. Yeah, I think it's, it's a flex spot for hand traps. Um, it could be evenly matched as well. You could play that in the main and have that, especially when if there's not a lot, uh, not a lot of negates in the main mm -hmm. or like on the, in decks at the moment, like during like August format and stuff. Yeah, where you could just blow them out with an evenly matched and they just lose. Mm -hmm. It's also great. Uh, and then I'm playing Nibiru because you have to. Yeah. Like, you, you just have to. And it sucks that it conflicts with Faker because you can only do one or the other. You can't do both. Yeah. Um, which is something that not a lot of people know, especially playing against Geist, is that if they Faker you, if they shotgun the Faker, they it, it either means A, they don't... Yeah, they can't Nibiru you. So you, if you're playing a combo deck, you can just go off for free. Ah. Uh, Nugget so, of information so you, there. Yeah, exactly. See? <laughs> um... And also, if if they haven't, and if they do Nibiru you as well, it means they can't fake on the same turn. So it's it's you have to make that choice depending on the situation right. when playing and playing against them as well. Do you know what? That's a, a restriction I never even realized was there. Yeah, it's, it's a big reason why a lot of the extra stuff is very situational. It's why you only oh. ever see alter guys making Hankstia. because, but we'll get we'll get more onto that later. But because it's an alter guys card, makes sense. You're locked into it, yeah. Oh. Um, so. I'm playing the one pot of Dwali. Um There's lots of cards this could be. Um, like Upstart Goblins, so you could play 39 cards. Yeah, and then draw into Extravagance. Yeah, look, you know what? I don't care. Listen, Patrick <laughs> Hoban, right? How many things have you won? Patrick Hoban told that? me 39 cards, Upstart Goblin. I thought it was 37 at the time. But... Well, yeah, obviously, but you yeah. know, you get the point. What, what has he done since like 2017? <laughs> what, you mean like retired from the game? Yeah, <laughs> it's relevant now. He's, he's like a boomer. <laughs> anyway, we'll pretend this is Upstar Goblin for your benefit, but okay, we'll, yeah. I guess yeah. we'll, we'll muse people. So Pot of Duality. Yeah, so Pot of Duality, I like it because you, it, it, it gets you deeper than an Upstar or... Ooh. Yeah, deeper. Or, um, <laughs> so, like, while with an Upstar, you might draw one card and it's, it's, it has no restrictions. You're not really, like, special summoner on your first turn anyway. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, you're summoning Melody, summoning Marionette, and passing. Yeah. Or worst case scenario, you're playing Silk Control. Yeah. And so getting getting deeper into the deck just allows you to have have better cards at your disposal than for the situation. I guess there's an argument for in a format like this, you've then got three choices, and they could potentially be a hand trap rather than just a random extra card in your hand. Like, you can choose exactly. something that's more relevant to your situation. So I guess it, there, I can see some argument for that. Yeah, it gives you that flex, especially with people playing um, Lightning Storm in the main sometimes as well now, with, as well as Dark Ruler. Mm -hmm. Like, Dark Ruler really weirdly, like, ruins the deck sometimes. Like, if you if your only, like, interruption is, like, Silk Bounce, Dark Ruler just kind of ends your day. And I guess you can't, like, Melee Seek them off it either because you can't inflict damage. Yeah, no, exactly. So, like, the deck doesn't play um, Dark Ruler no more for that very reason, because if you have Dark Ruler no more, you just can't break their board. Yeah, and that's what you, I guess if you're forced to go second, you, you need yeah. to be able to do that quickly. Otherwise, you're in, a, you're in a big, you know, given that half your deck is just traps. Yeah. Uh, so, next card after that is Pot of Extravagance, because who doesn't like Pot of Greed? Mm -hmm. You don't care about your extra deck. Anything that you do care about, you play two or three of. Yeah. Other than that, it's fine. Um, the next, you've got three Alter Geist traps. Um, this could be a mix, like some people play four. Yeah. I, th I just don't have this. I don't think there's space for it. Um, so there's three different three different traps as well you can play. You've got the Manifestation, mm -hmm. which is essentially called the Haunted. That it doesn't equip. It equips on resolution. Sorry. So you can have cool interactions with Silk, where you can bounce the Manifestation back to hand and summon the monster from Grave. Oh, okay. Still, and you keep the Manifestation in play, so that you can use it for next turn if you're able to get the Faker back. And it, it it's like look about looking to next turn. Yeah. Um. You, you've also got Protocol, mm -hmm. um, which um, negates monster effects. It means that your Altergeist effects on field cannot be negated. So. Which Sorry, I just want to interject here a little bit. So why would you only run one copy? For someone who doesn't play the deck, me personally, um, so, this feels like a very strong card. It is. However, um, just how the format's gone, Yeah. Um, you only really need one because you can just set it off Marionetta and Manifestation is better to draw. 
Okay. Because, because with Golden Lord and Conquistador being in the meta, protocols are sitting duck. Mm-hmm. Um, because they can just pop it. Yeah. Um, so manifestation allows you to add it back, and allows it to cycle through a lot easier. So rather than but, just breaking on them, you can choose to have it as and when you need it in against yeah, decks that can otherwise just get rid of it. Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and then next, you got the last hand trap, which is impermanence. Just solid card, insane. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it does the job. Um, and then pass or spoofing, which is hundred percent the best card in the deck. May, maybe behind Melaseek. Yeah. Um, being able to just search to shuffle any any of your dead altar guys. So when you you draw that double silk, like I always do, you can shuffle it back into the deck and search out the faker and summon that exact same silk. Yeah. Um, also allows you to loop the Kunkri as well, because Kunkri, funnily enough, is not once per turn. So you can bounce it and then just redo it. Yeah, you can just keep looping, so the more spoofing you have, the more times <laughs> you can just sit there and like not die. So you could technically, um, if you hadn't ended up with a weird convoluted scenario where you have three of these on the field and Kunkri in hand, you can negate like four attacks, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you could just keep looping it. And if you have a Silk Bounce as well, you can negate five attacks. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> And that's not that's, that's not even including Link Reaver as well. <laughs> so like, in theory, you could stop like all six attacks that they could possibly do, unless they have like Super Poly or something can summon other stuff. <laughs> but at that fair. point, then they're just then at that point they're just better than you. And... Yeah. <laughs> um. Then next we've got Solemn Strike. It's the best counter trap in the game. So, There's... can you give me some reasoning why you would run this over Solemn Judgment? So Judgment is uh, is very high roll. Um, so what I mean by that is that Judgment is very, very good going first, but it's, it's not very good going second. Okay. Um, while Strike, even if you draw it when going second, it can still do stuff because it can negate monster monster negates. Mm-hmm. So say, for example, you have like a format of like you play against Animance Payer and they have the Drag Guy on field. You flip a spoofing, shuffle something back, and they go Drag Guy effect mm-hmm. to negate it. And you can chain the Solemn Strike to negate the Drag Guy. Okay. Um, so it, it help, it's a mixture of helping to break boards, um, protects you against hand traps. It just does so much for 1,500 life points, which is, which is nothing. Yeah. And and if they do like make a big board and then they just yeet it all into a, a borrow sword for some reason or an access code... People do it. This time. Yeah, people do. And stopping that is just really, really strong. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then next in this last spot is this... This card is generally a flex spot as well. Um, so th- this is normally either Torrential Tribute, Compulse, um, Crackdown, or I have seen some people playing t- uh, Typhoon. Okay. Typhoon is the, is the other option that I've seen. I really like Typhoon. I, I played it in my Nationals list, um, but I just don't think there's any continuous spell or trap cards on the field that you really care about right now. No, not at the moment. Yeah, which is why I don't like Typhoon. No, Compulse is nice because, again, it can be used during, um, during you know, going second as well. Um, so if, if they have a Sunlight Wolf, for example, um, just sat there chilling on the field or with no back row or anything, they've got a Roar and Grave, you can just Compulse it back to the extra deck. Mm-hmm. They have to remake a Roar. or um, Not a Roar, uh, a Wolf, sorry. Uh, Torrential is really nice because it's good against all the combo decks right now, like the Synchro Engine. You wait till they make the Aurora Dawn and then you just destroy their entire board then someone faker off of it um seems nice oh it's it's very nice um and against it's, not, it's like torrential's only really got one bad matchup and that's unchained if you ever get unlucky enough <laughs> to play against that in a yos or something like that you know <laughs> who would do that yeah it's, it's a habit. hate when that happens <laughs> yeah um Okay, so the side, I will, I'll gloss over some of this because, like, the hand traps are pretty self-explanatory. Um, I think Cosmic Cyclone at the moment is kind of self-explanatory, like Eldritch and yeah, stuff. It's... You don't want to, you don't want to pop stuff. You want to get rid of it completely. Yeah, it, it stops that. It also gets like it's really good against the uh, Salamander Great Roar and like yeah. their spells. Yeah, because like um, obviously they've got the protection, the bill and protection. I will, I will say one thing about the main deck first um, is that. In this current format, you, it's very dice roll heavy. Mm-hmm. So your, your deck has got to be ready for that, so that you might not win the dice roll. Um, because if you, if you win the dice roll, you should you should win. Yeah. You should win that game just because of how the deck goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's why there's such a high hand trap count at the moment. 
uh, you'll see people like Oliver Newton, for example. He he always plays a lot. He's always played a lot of hand traps. I mean, throughout the I, time. I think for argument's sake, like it's not even just all guys in this position. I think all the decks that are doing well at the moment are decks that can run a a relatively small engine or at least compact enough to fit in this kind of nine hand trap ratio sort of thing. Like you you need to see at least one hand trap in your hand, like even going for, like even going first, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, like you, I think the, the only deck that gets away with that is Adamant's Pair, and that's because it's just big rocks go fast, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Rocky Lights one, as I've been calling it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, going through the side deck, um, Cosmic Cyclone is just, just spot removal. It's just so good. Uh, evenly, you, you can main deck, but um, while it's very, it's it's incredible against Outlitch. It's not so great against Adamant's Pair unless you can pay out all the, all their negates. Yeah, yeah. And they normally end on two or three, so you just sort of like just leave it. Yeah, like, you put it in to try and bait the negates out so you can kind of play. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 not great against them, especially if they go first. Yeah. Um, and then the last four cards, I've got the three Solemn Judgments and the Imperial Order. Um, there are some matchups where Imperial Order just wins. And yeah, it's, it's an nice all-eye win just... if you if you do it right. Yeah, and sometimes it's just nice to turn your brain off and just sit under order for <laughs> for, for round. Um, but it also stops lightning storm as well, which is also the key point. So, so it, with those four cards, you're kind of siding for their side. Right. So if you know that you're going to go first, and they know that they're going to be made to go second, which inevitably they will, they are going to be siding and stuff like that, or uh, you know potentially dark rulers and things like that. Yeah, um, less so Dark Ruler, um, but more Lightning Storm, evenly matched, Twin Twister, Cosmic yeah. Cyclone, yeah. stuff that people are already playing. And they'll tend to take out their hand traps a lot, so I'll tend to take out my hand traps as well and just put in the judgments. Well, as you said, hand traps don't well. really do anything against this, do they? So Yeah, so if you, if you play the game right, like there's not really many chances you can hand trap them, mm -hmm. um, especially if they have the... the and any time that they do, you are weak to a hand trap. You can always make sure that you have the protocol or the strike set. So, like, it's very rare I'll spoofing where, um, and shuffle a card into the deck without having some protection for it. Yeah. Um, because having that protection overall just guarantees your plays go through a lot easier. Yeah. Obviously. Um, <laughs> sounds self explanatory, but people don't know this. Well, you know what? That's, that's the whole point of this video is to assume that the people watching. Sorry, my pug's just making weird noises next to me. <laughs> we just have to assume that the people don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. And that's not, not to be a dick. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, even with decks I do play. So we just assume... True. <laughs> we just assume... <laughs> that, look, my logic is if I don't know what I'm doing, they can't figure it out either. So uh -huh. And it, it weirdly works for some reason. Like, IP pass, strong game. Anyway... <laughs> Blew um, me away. <laughs> hey, it worked. Legit, I was screaming at the street, like the screen, just like, just do this. Yeah, just use over after uh, effect. Like, ah, oh, I was like, why not? Don't, don't, don't. Let's let's look at <laughs> this. Will be here for another half an hour ripping on me. Uh, okay, yeah. let's <laughs> talk through the extra deck. So obviously, a lot of this again, I feel is self-explanatory. Um, like Axis Code Talk is just insane. Yeah, so the thing with the extra deck is that 90% of it is irrelevant. Yeah. Um, because it's all just extravagance fodder. Because yeah. you don't need your extra deck to win. You can you can win without it. Um, it's, um, it makes your life a little bit harder when pushing, but like nine times out of ten, the extra deck isn't the stuff that's winning it for you. Hexty is the key, though, isn't it? That's like the key yeah. card here. Yeah, Hexty is what, what helps you push. Um, because it not only does it allow you... Um, it, it swings for three one when it's under Marionel, and that that is like a scary amount for a lot of decks. Yeah. Um, and and it's got the spell and trap card in the gate as well, which is big. And it also floats, except as any autogress card. <laughs> um, obviously you've got access code talker, which is just nuts. Like, mm. it's it's mental. Uh, you've got prime banshee, which is another autogress card. Um, that you can make as link three. It's not made often. Um, it has some niche interactions. Um. It allows your Hextia to be um, three six, which allows it to be over over um, not over Raptor, um, Raid Raptor, Ultimate Falcon. Yeah, which is one uh, of those the... sticky cards that you'd normally struggle with. Yeah, um, and it allows it also allows you to add cards back. So when we had one Faker, um, 
it was a way to add faker back to hand you can link it off into a hex deal mm-hmm. uh so like real similar to like silent gray how they re- reincarnate link or whatever it's called yeah uh you can do similar stuff with that with all guys because hex is just two all guys monsters yeah. um which is um so you can tr- relink that to get the search effect uh you've got apollo um again protection from hand traps during like the second or third turn of the game when they might be top deck in one it also like can just win games outright um if if you're able to get four monsters on board and they can't deal with it and you can just link it all into an appalooza when you don't have game like you can just you can just win from there yeah uh, especially it allows you to search like m- more than likely you can have a melody on field that you've linked off into it and it allows you to just protect that search mm-hmm. and go from there you got borrow sword um you could play borrow load as well but i don't think it overly matters i think bet- between apollo borrow sword borrow load and access code you pretty much cover ev- every option that you need yeah um for rank force phoenix because it's just good like Great the fact utility. that you can chain block it as well yeah and decide which way you want and also if you discard um s- certain cards uh you can you can add them back so like if you discard manifestation when you have a protocol in grave you can add back a protocol like there's a lot of niche interactions like that especially with silk as well which lets you add back a spell or trap card from grave mm-hmm. and then moving on to unicorn um it's ju- it's just good generic like, removal yeah it's, it's what can you say about this card that hasn't already been said pretty much <laughs> yeah that's true. uh Link Cross has some really nice combos with the deck, um, okay. especially in the near future when Battles of Legend comes out, uh, when we get Pukiri. Which we're going to cover after this part of the video. Yeah, uh, and there's some nice interactions that Pukiri has. And it's also current as well with um, Haunted Rock, Yeah, um, which allows you to do some more combos that way. Um, and then we've got two Link Kruber, uh one Ning- uh, Ningarisu. And link link reverse self explanatory it allows you to trigger seek um and also it can tr- it's just protection as well yeah um depending on the matchup also, though you might want to go into al mirage mm-hmm. um f- if anyone's still playing shadol in like 2020 um <laughs> or when you get starts back up again al mirage is really nice because you have an extra monster on the field they go to play shadol fusion and you just trip you out yeah and they just like uh if their hand isn't good they it forces them into an awkward situation yeah uh ningarisu again because it it just out stuff that is a problem yeah uh having multiple like between like i said between borrow sword appalooza access code and ningarisu you've pretty much got everything covered uh and then you've got anima which is slowly becoming one of my favorite cards in the deck okay so explain this one to me because i don't like, I've started seeing this creeping into a few... Not even just necessarily uh, Alter Geist, but in a couple of lists here and there. But I haven't haven't spent a lot of time looking at it. So what is it that, that's making this useful? So uh, you can target one face-up monster this card points to and equip that face-up monster to this card. Basically, Thousand Eyes Restrict. Yeah. But, but it's just what it points to. What makes it really strong again, in Alter Geist particularly is that it baits out three Opalus in the gates. Right. So you summon. You, so if you summon Melisik, mm-hmm. you attack directly. Mm-hmm. You target, say Appaloosa. Mm-hmm. They're going to negate you. Yeah, of course. Like the, so, then you go main phase two. You link into Anima in the zone that Appaloosa gives you, because obviously Appaloosa points up as well. Of course, so you yeah. can just summon it there, and you get Seek effect. If if they don't negate that with Appaloosa, then you'll get either Marionetta to do the same shenanigans the next turn. Mm-hmm. Or you're getting multi faker, which is again something they don't want. Yeah. And then you've got the anima effect as well, because you got to remember, remember that um, Appaloosa doesn't destroy. Just negates. So like, yeah, it just negates. So okay. um, you can you can then equip, try and attempt to equip with anima, and then you've just baited out three negates of Appaloosa. At which point you don't really care. Yeah. Because then it, it's all dealt with. Um, generally, people won't be making Appaloosa against Altergeists. Um, Unless they fit fear and hand traps, uh, like Nibiru and stuff. Or but... they've got just such an excess of resources that they get greedy, in which case exactly, they should get yeah. punished anyway. Exactly, and and forcing out three negates, and then you like after that, especially with strikes and stuff, you've only really got to deal with a weak Appaloosa, which at most it'll be on eight hundred, mm-hmm. a, a savage, and possibly a herald. It puts um, you in a lot better depending. position. 
yeah, it allows you to play going second a lot more, a lot easier. Okay. Um, which is something the deck struggles with. Okay, so for the next part of the video, Adam's going to show us through a few basic lines of play, just to give you some ideas of basically what to do, uh, depending on what you see in your hand. Obviously, we can't cover them all, it's all format dependent, and also depends on what your opponent's playing, but it should give you some ideas. So, take it away. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show is Mario plus any Altergeist monster. Okay. Um, this works. It works great with Seek. Yep. It works great with silk that we've got here even a second marionette it works with okay um just because of, of like what you what you do so the first thing you do is normal summon the marionette so this is where haunted rock uh haunted yeah haunted rock comes in um this is one of the flex cards so the reason why i don't play this in, in my variant is i like to play it where i don't lose to any hand traps while a lot of these combos can lose the hand traps very easily okay um so it's very high risk, high reward. So if you, if you play these hand traps or like these, like this card and these combos, you you get a lot of benefit out of it. However, you also it's very weak to to certain points. So li literally every hand trap that's played in the current meta, DD Crow, Vela, all this other stuff, it, at this point loses to a, a hand trap. Right. It is. Um. So anyway, so what Haunted Rock says, uh, if this card was set by an Autocast card, you can activate it at the turn it was set. Okay. So being set off the right now, like, yeah. you can activate it straight away. When the card is activated, send one Altergeist guys monster from your hand to the graveyard. This is not a cost. There's a lot of people that think it is. It's not. So you you can act if as long as you've got an Altergeist guys card in hand, you can activate it. Mm -hmm. And then if you have something like a silk or a spoofing, you can shuffle it back into the deck, just to get that free trap activation or that bounce from from silk on field. Yeah. Something like that. As long as you've got an Altergeist guys card in hand that you can activate it with. Okay. Obviously, we have to trust our opponent, but, you know, Konami. <laughs> um, and it also has another effect of, similar to Protocol, where you can send an Altergeist car, uh, card. This one says Monster. Uh, instead of Monster effects, this negates Traps. Okay. So it has quite nice interactions with Impermanence and um, even the Matched as well. And in Geist Mirrors as well. So, yeah. So once we've done that, some uh, once we've set the Haunted Rock, we discard an Altergeist card. So this card, this situation was sending silk. Mm -hmm. uh, then we use Marionette's second effect to send the Haunted Rock special in the silk. Okay. Um, and then after this, we'll link the two um, for Hextia. In this, if you have silk, um, silk effect will go off here, adding back the Haunted Rock. If you have Seek, you can add you can add back or add any monster from deck. Um, so you could add um, Multi Faker, for example. Mm -hmm. And then after this, you link off the Hextia for Link Cross. So at this point, you can go Chain Link 1 Hextia, Chain Link 2 Link Cross. Yeah. So it chain blocks that as well, which is really, really strong. So you get the two tokens, and then you could search for either Faker if you want to, or you could search for a Protocol. Mm -hmm. Either or, it allows you to um, get Faker to hand and it allows you to combo from there. So that that's the original bit, like the basic combo with um, uh, Mario plus any Altergeist, um, Dixon Faker. Yeah. So because there's an extra combo that you can have with Faker as well. So if I just reset the deck here, it's also worth noting that you'd also have a handful of other cards in hand to play with there as well. Of course, this is this is just a two card combo. Um. So then, if I add this back to hand, so. Similar situation, we've just got Marionetta plus Multi Faker. Mm -hmm. uh, again, normal summon Marionetta. Get that Haunted Rock to the field. Activate the Haunted Rock, discarding the Marionetta. Uh, Marionetta, Multi Faker. Um, Begins with the name. Yeah, it's close enough. Uh, then use Marionetta's effect again, sending this, special summon yeah. Faker. Mm -hmm. Now Faker's effect will trigger. So this is the way to get Multi Faker's effect on your turn one. Okay. Um. So while this is so this is different to the other combo. While, um, in that last combo, if it's any altar guys, you kind of lose to like an effect failure or a hand any hand trap pretty much at this point, or when you summon the monster if you, if it doesn't go through. Yeah. While this, if you summon the faker and the faker hits the board, and say they impermanence it or they valor it or whatever, 
um, at that point then, you can still just make the hex deer and make the link cross, yeah. and you get to the same point either way. But if it goes through, then you, you're able to get Melaseek from here. And then you can link these two off for hex deer. Yep. And then you can link... Then, then Melaseek's effect will go off, allowing you to add another faker. And then this is where, like, the relinking happens, where you can make the Hextia and Marinetta into another Hextia. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you, you have the option. You could get Manifestation. Yep. Um, or you could get Protocol. So, so depending on what, what are those other cards you have in your hand. So if you have, like, Strike in your hand as well, or uh, if you're playing two Protocol, you have another Protocol. You could, you should probably get the manifestation, um, or you you can get the manifest um, the protocol if you already have a manifestation in hand. It depends on what you've got in your hand. Okay. Um. So it depends. It really depends on what you, what you want and what you're playing against. Well, it's all situational. So if you learn both of these, you're basically in a position where if you know, like if you've got multi faker, you're either going to go into combo one uh, if it yeah. gets stopped, and if not, you're going to go into combo two, and then you're going to see mm -hmm. even more advantage, sort of thing. Exactly, yeah. It, it, it's, a very, it's a very high roll. So it keeps going all the way through. And so at this point, uh, you could use Protocol and then get, like, send the Hex to you and get more advantage that way so you, you control the tempo, keep going. Mm -hmm. Or you could go even even more ham and get the Manifestation. So that if you get Manifestation um, and you activate it during your opponent's turn. So what a lot of players will do when they first start playing is summon the, the Hex to you here. Mm -hmm. Um... As the format's going to develop, especially when we have Dragon coming out, the tins, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be more worth to summon it here. Um, and the reason for that is that when so that when you resolve Faker, you can summon one here and summon the Sequoitus here. Right. And that's super important because if Kaiju's become a thing in whatever, if when Dragoon's popular. Mm -hmm. It then forces them to make a choice, and a big part of old guys is making your opponent make choices, and then punishing them for making set the the choices. Yeah, that's the way I see it. So here, if they if they kaiju the silk, I'm gonna get the haunted rod back, and I'm they don't get the bounce, but I've still got the a negate. If they kaiju either one of the hexdeers, I'm gonna keep the silk bounce, mm -hmm. and also I'm gonna have the hexdeer search. And I'm still gonna have a bounce. Uh, I'm still gonna have a negate with with um, Hextia. Yeah. So it, it's all you're forcing them to make that choice because realistically they don't want to hit the silk. Yeah. But the, if if you hit if you kaiju any of the other ones, it gives me so much more advantage than it's worth. So they they basically have to give you advantage. Yeah. It's, again, it's punishing them for making a play. Yeah. Which which is how I like I like to play Geist is. <laughs> steamrolling people when they make mistakes or if they make a play that I want them to make. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so and this board is just really strong anyway because Hexty is in once per turn. <laughs> people don't realize this. <laughs> so you, you so if you, if you wanted to and you you just kept the Hexty and Marionette underneath it um and you had a manifestation you can negate with Hexty and then someone manifest uh, with manifestations on another card underneath it, mm. and just keep going. Jeez, okay. And so you, you get two negates for free, essentially. Seems nice. A three if you want to summon Faker under it afterwards as well, so you can just keep going. And then the last combo that I'll show, this is the other main one if I just reset the deck, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, involves the new card that should be coming out in Battles of Legend. So this new uh, Pukiri, uh, literally replaces he uh, Haunted Rock for me personally. I think this is going to be a three of in every Alter Ghost deck um, because it's just so good. Um, it, and it says if this if an Alter Ghost monster you control will be used as link material for an Alter Ghost monster. Yeah. Um, you can, uh, this card in your hand can also be used as material. Uh, you can only use that effect of Pukiri once per turn. Mm -hmm. uh, if an Alter Ghost link monster is link summoned uh, to your field while this card is in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. That effect can only be used once per duel. Okay. So, in this situation, uh, Pukri plus literally any Altergeist that you can summon um, gets you a multi-faker in hand, guaranteed, and a trap card, guaranteed. Okay. So, we'll, we'll go with Silk, because 
um oh sorry um so for the trap and multi faker you need either marionette or, or silk uh seek sorry and then silk just gets you the multi faker for free okay. for guaranteed um so if we get marionette for example um so you can also marionette and you get the trap here yeah um so we'll just get a protocol it, it, it doesn't matter which one you pick again it's all situational yeah um and then you link these two off um for hextia um if at this point say you sent seek instead of marionetta you can then chain block the seek so you could have seek as chain link one and then Pukri as chain link two yeah so that guarantees you the faker and then at this point you can link off the hextia and get link cross and then chain link one hextia chain link two link cross so you just keep chain blocking yeah, so it's not playing into hand traps. So at this point, you have either a manifestation or protocol with a faker in hand off of just Marionetta and Pukri. And if you really wanted to, you could add back the Pukri as well to use it again for next turn. Yeah. So you, you essentially, you've traded your two cards for a trap, a follow-up in hand, um, and... Well, two, two followers in opposite in hand, interaction, yeah. and whatever else you already have in your hand as well. Mm -hmm. That seems good. Yeah. Um, the great thing about Pukuri is that like it's also level one, which is surprise comes up surprisingly more than you think. Yeah. Because if it's the only Altergeist card you've got in your hand, it allows you to make Anima, Link, Rebo, all, yeah. all that good stuff. So out of um, curiosity, just sorry, want to jump in there quickly. Uh, looking at Pukri, this is one of the new ones that's in the OCG. Um, we obviously don't have it confirmed here yet, but it is something that people want to sort of plan for, I assume. Um, yeah, it's, it's in the collector's pack. So in the collector's pack in OCG, that's normally our Battles of Legend. Okay, so if we assume it's in Battles of Legend, there's a few others, right? There's The, the other one that comes into my head is, uh, uh, what's it called? There's a Link 4, right? Yeah, um, um, I can't remember its name. Um, what is it? It begins with, oh, an, no, it begins with an M, but so do Memory most of Gant them. or something. Yeah, Memory Gaunt, that's it. Yeah. And that, so that yeah. kind of is, what, just like weaker than other options? or? Yeah, so the problem, with, the, the problem with it is that, like, it just doesn't do anything that other rank four options or link four options that we've got. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't have a negate, so you'd rather double hex you. Yeah. Um, it it beats over stuff but so does access code and borrow sword yeah it does it doesn't help you otk as much but like the, the only thing that it's good for is that it says altergeist so it's one and... of those cards that's kind of just it, it if people are going to be playing it they're either going to be playing it because it's novelty of playing it or yeah. like maybe they don't have obviously they might not have the better cards but like if, if you have opportunities you would choose other link fours over it yeah, there's, especially with Borrow Sword being super cheap, Borrow Load being super cheap, Apollo getting a reprint yeah. uh, in October. Like, I just don't see a situation why you would ever pick that card over other ones. Yeah, that makes sense. Because even if money is a factor and you can't afford like Access Code Talker or Apollo right now, Borrow Sword is still cheap and so is Borrow Load. And to be fair, every other card that you're showing in the extra deck here is not expensive they've all been reprinted now anyway yeah uh, so like hexia is a supers in the deck i think link cross is the only other thing that's expensive oh yeah sure but like, i mean relative you know to, to what it could be i guess yeah having so, one extra deck card that's me medium priced let's say yeah and, and everything else being cheap yeah so majority of it you can get in like tra trades and stuff as well because people are just literally giving half the deck away yeah um, again, the main deck is fairly cheap. Um, outside of impermanence, which has had, which is, you you should have anyway. Yeah. Is the way I see it, um, because it is a staple. And um, if you don't have an impermanence, like you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah, I think it's one of them. Like I I, I say this quite a lot in my videos about people should always keep hold of their staples. Uh, I've been guilty. Yeah. Obviously, sometimes real life shit happens and you have to get rid of them. But we, the assumption is always that you have them. Yeah. Um, and Extravagance, while it, is, it isn't quite a staple, I, f I feel when owning Extravagance, it gives you not necessarily just the ability to play Geist, but also 
of the guru if you're that disgusting kind of person <laughs> um mind burn again this... if you want to play more to generic stuff like it fits in so many different decks that especially with it being just reprinted uh in toon chaos n- not that that's made a massive difference in price no but there's a, like it's it's still 10 quid cheaper than what it was well, look, there's a, a good chance it gets reprinted again in either the tins or in Battles of Legend or exactly. it, something like that. And and to be fair, it's one of those, not even just with this deck, as you say, like there's a dozen other good decks that become infinitely better by having access to this. Yeah, even even not not even just like control decks, like you can play Water with it as well. Yeah. You can play Dinos. Yeah. Um, Eldritch. I mean, if Halka Fibrax like, gets hit, then Dino stops being a combo deck, basically. So yeah. then cards like Extra are playable. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, is that it for all the combos that you wanted to show? Yeah, I think that's pretty much all the combos that guys pretty much play, to be honest. Like, a lot of. Like, at the moment, we've, we haven't got Pukuri. Um, like, most of the combos will have to revolve around Haunted Rock. But, like, like I said before, like. Hand traps just sort of suck, and the, like, because they a well timed dash against this deck can just end your entire day. Yeah, if you're not careful, and playing into it isn't just isn't worth it half the time. Like, you get a lot of times when people, especially newer old guys players, will just go normal summon, um, link this off for link Karibo, and then go effect it gets ashed and say if they didn't ha- don't have the faker in hand or any alter guys card say this is literally anything else yeah um your spoof is now dead as well yeah um so a key thing to, for this is letting your mail seek die by battle okay um that because at that point it can't be ashed can't be called by the graved like because it's a damage step they, yeah. they yeah they can't interact with it okay um, fair enough so it's it's one of those things where you, you just sort of got to it comes with experience and playing the playing the deck and especially like i said earlier like them summoning phantasme is also a problem as well because if you look at this hand if they already have a phantasme like i ain't out in this yeah yeah um it's just how it goes and so there's just never a reason to play into it that much yeah um the other sort of niche sort of thing that does come up is when you've open um is it silk plus manifestation? Uh, and that's sort of your only play. Yeah. Come on, Dawn, but there we go. <laughs> um, so a, a lot of times people will just summon silk and wait for it to die. Again, if Phantasma is not massively in the meta, you can you can link this off into Almirage. Mm-hmm. It sounds fairly obvious, but like not, not a lot of people realize it. And then you've got the manifestation live straight away. Yeah. Um, so you can bring back the silk and then you can also bounce the manifestation with silk yeah which means your silk is live as well yeah which which is super important when you've got a, a less than stellar hand yeah um allowing, be, having some interactions is always is always good it normally just buys you i guess enough time like i know enough to, i mean i've played against you a lot and i know a lot of the time that i can tell when you've had a rough game when that's the kind of opening you would go for, is you're ending on like a silk and one other card, but it, it's enough to buy you maybe one or two turns setting that up. Uh, especially yeah. if I've, you know, your opponent's not opened amazingly. Uh, yeah. And, and that's normally enough for you to set up what you need to be able to start establishing your board. Once you establish your board with this deck, there's actually, I think there's very few decks that can easily out a, a fully established Altergeist board. Yeah, the deck is is very steamrolly. Like if you if you get ahead in the early game, like you open extravagance and do all that, you can really steamroll. Um, the deck also quite like the deck in a simplified game state is really really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, it might not have one card starters, but it has one card engines yeah. as such. Like you can marionetta, and that can get you back into the game. The melody can get you back into the game. The Kunkri can keep you alive. Spoofing all this other stuff and like. Uh, and even if you draw the trap, like the hand traps or the traps, it stops your opponent uh, having those plays as well. Mm-hmm. So it's it's basically, do I have a play until they, they don't pre- at that point? Yeah. And in the in the future match of the Wire West that's on Jamie's channel, um, it's just one top deck can just win you the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially in like the mirror. Um, another cute interaction is in the mirror. 
um, if you're playing Crackdown and you crack down their um, monster, uh, you can shuffle it back into their deck with spoofing. <laughs> it's a, it doesn't come up as often as you think, but it's just a funny interaction that exists. And then, <laughs> just... you, then you can search your own faker and go off from there. So, like, nice. It gives a nice little cra- uh, edge to crack uh, Crackdown yeah um over the other two and like you've got with compulse for example where you can bounce back your own faker and then mm. resummon it okay. um which is nice against like evenly matched and stuff um because if the evenly match you can chain that and then add back the faker and you've still got some form of interruption afterwards if you haven't used faker that turn so it's a weird one isn't it because like the very very basics of this deck don't seem all that di- like on the surface it's like okay flip trap card and then play and your opponent won't know what to do sort of thing but actually yeah. once you learn those niche interactions that's where it can actually compete really well yeah the, the best way i, I see all guys is it doesn't require much technical play skill it's more matchup knowledge yeah so if you've ever played like fighting games and stuff like tekken or mortal Kombat, you've got to know how to deal with each matchup it's a similar sort of situation with geist where you've got to know other decks choking points um and what what options they have so like against salad how many extenders they could possibly have um against adamant's payer again like have they used their extender so it's free to nibiru and stuff like that Mm -hmm. because if you nibiru like adamant's payer too early they just sort of lose or they they just they can carry on but if you if you do it when they've used the researcher Mm -hmm. the one that specializes if if there's a rock on the field yeah um if they've used that already, then you can just plow through them, and then they just can't do anything after that point. Yeah. So, so generally, the, once once you have Geist under an understanding of how Geist play, the best way to learn Geist is, is to not play Geist. <laughs> <laughs> as dumb as it sounds, it's it's to play everything else. Play everything else, and, and you'll work it out along the way. Yeah. So generally, when I play online, I don't play all the Geist. Yeah, that makes sense. You might as well learn um, how the others playing it because you know Geist well enough anyway. Yeah, it's, it's what happens when you've played the deck for nearly two years at this point. <laughs> you should play it pretty well. <laughs> Should region my region will say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what we'll do is uh, we'll have a quick break in the video now, and then we'll get into the final list that you want to show us, which is how things change when Pukri comes into the format. Okay, so Adam is back for the secondary uh, deck list for this video. So primarily here, we're going to be covering what Pukri changes and what options you may have. Uh, as and when this comes out for us. So uh, do you want to talk us through what it does to the deck, how it changes things? Um, Quickly before we do, I will note that we've covered most of these cards in detail in the previous list, so we won't talk in detail over the others. Uh, We will talk in detail, obviously, about what Pukri does and what the other cards that get changed in because of Pukri do, but the rest of it will kind of just gloss over. Yeah, so obviously you've got Pukri, which um, allows you to do the... Uh, the combos that you have that basically replaces haunted rock yeah and so that you don't it doesn't lose to any as many hand traps or anything like that mm-hmm. um the only thing that really changes is like um i've took out the nibiru's i'll probably put them in the side obviously this is just an altered list of the list that you would have seen earlier yeah um i, I still like the, the the six hand traps plus the three impermanents so nine in total mm-hmm. i think that's still super strong because it's altergeist is a very high roll deck um because of the increased monster count, you can play one for one. Yep. Um, so I didn't before because it's not it's it's too risky. Because if you open just like one monster, and that again that one for one gets ashed, or because hand traps are so popular right now, um, you just sort of like lose because of it. Yeah. Because you've gone an egg, and it's it's just not a good situation for anyone involved. Um, and I've dropped the pot of duality because of those first turn combos that you can get. Um. So if you like, if you open like Pukuri plus, and like any of the alter guys that you can get, so Marinella, Seek, uh, Silquitus, any of them, even Multi Faker, it still works with. You just don't get like the trap card out of it. Yeah. Um, having that pot of Duality just it just doesn't work in combination with it. Yeah. Um, because obviously you want special summon a lot with Pukuri, but then you you can't. <laughs> so put it bluntly one like, for one makes much more sense in this kind of scenario yeah um and going back to what we were saying earlier about the budget alternatives like now that multi is at three you can play pot of desires again yeah. obviously it's not as optimal but however if, if it's as it's just been reprinted as a rare 
uh, everyone and their mother should have a pot, pot of his eyes by this point. Yeah, you really should have that um, card in your set. Yeah, again, it's a staple. You can play that over the, the extravagance and alter your build slightly because of it. Um, like again, you could play the Kukunkuri, um for the the desires and just slight changes like that. Um, they still allow you to play the deck at, f at full power as such. Mm -hmm. um, you, you just have have to play different options. Uh, yeah. Like I know, speaking to other budget alter guys players, if they don't have extravagance, they play in desires for some reason, and I'm like. Oh, that's so sad when you're gonna banish that faker, <laughs> and you just win yeah. the mirror because of it. Um, another option as well is spellbook knowledge. Yeah. Um, because funnily enough, all altergeist are spellcasters. Something people forget as well. Yeah, so, and so like you can send, you can summon Melaseek, send the Melaseek, um, draw two, and then search faker, which is surprisingly strong. You can also be an like... asshole and go secret village of the spellcasters. Yeah, that's another side deck card that if Strike is in the meta, um, you can just play that and just win. Very valid. Because they're, they're not playing back row removal right now. Yeah. Really. So as long as you keep an Altergeist on field, you're Gucci. Um, um, it also um, kind of ends like Shadol's day as well, kind of. Um, because it means they can't summon their good stuff and you can just end their turn pretty much if they don't have El Shadol. Mm -hmm. Because you, you can just bounce their their one summon for the spellcaster and they just sort of let it pass. Yeah. Um that's pretty much it. Um there's some other side deck options you could play like Typhoon and some other stuff. Um anti spell is another option if you wanted to play that sort of list. Just looking through my mind to see what other stuff you can play. Obviously there's the Mystic Mind variant as well. Mm -hmm. Which um the Gabriel Neres was playing. I think it's Neres the Disciples one. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Um he, he he won the LCS with the Mystic Mind build, playing Demise of the Land and Metaverse and all that stuff. Um, so there's that option, and he was also playing Saline in the extra deck, um, which if there's three spell cards in the graveyard, um, you can special on a spellcaster from grave. So if oh, you can okay. make, so if you can make into that, it allows you to make access code talker. Yeah, and nine I've seen that being played have... as well, and, and not just in this deck, in other decks, it's an easy way to get into it. Yeah, it's similar to the Sky Striker version where you summon Hulk, summon Vela, and go from there. Um, you can do you could do similar things in this deck um, because of it. Um, what else is there? Obviously, you can play Cerberus in the extra deck as well, which is nice. Yeah. Um, uh, you could also play Wake of the Dragon in the side deck if like Twin Twister and all that, and Lightning Souls really popular. Mm -hmm. um, when Dragon comes out, there's some builds in the OCG where they were playing Tour Guide. Okay, that's um, interesting. So, so remember in the OCG has multi faker at one and seek at two and spoofing at two. <laughs> okay. So they've just butchered the deck pretty much. That's, that's what they do though, don't they? they? They don't go like, they don't like just tap, they don't reprimand decks like we do. They go, right, we've had enough of you. Now we're just going to obliterate your ability to play. Like, just yeah. hammer everything. So, so what they've been doing, what they've been doing sometimes in the OCG is summon tour guide, summon Sangan, link into Anaconda. Summon Dragoon, search Multi Faker, <laughs> which is it's low key disgusting when you think about it. Um, a lot of, I've seen some people playing the Charmers as well, the Fire and Water one. Yeah. Um, so the Fire one you can bring back Sunlight Wolf and then make Access Code Talker. Yeah. Um, because you can make the Fire one with Hextia. I've also seen play, people playing the Water one as well. Um, which you can summon with Melisek because Melisek's a Water. Yeah. And then bring back the needle fiber that they've used mm -hmm. and then go from there and then make access code and keep going from that point okay. um some other cards that i've seen like I've, uh, in my national list i played Heatlio, <laughs> the salmon gray card because you could bring back uh with crackdown you can make the heater heater then special summon one from grave and then you get a free spin pretty much against salmon great which is also always nice I guess this is the advantage of having a, an extra deck where you don't you don't necessarily need to like you've got so many options you could choose to go with. Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, a card that I'm not playing currently is uh, Pointer of the Red Lotus in the side as well. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's just a really good card for going second. I think a point is a lot better. Oh, going first, sorry, not going second. <laughs> um, I think that's better if you're if you're maining the judgments because it gives you more of that high roll going first. Yeah. Um, because again, if you're going first, you should probably win. Um, there's some other floodgates that you can play, like Rivalry. 
Yeah. Um, because it's all spellcasters again, you can just sort of go through it all. Um, some spicy text that I like. Um, when Faker went to one, I was playing Dark Renewal. Okay. Which is a Dark Magician card. Okay. Uh, that says when your opponent normal special and monster target one monster or one of those monsters and one spellcaster monster you control, send both to the graveyard, then special summon one dark spellcaster from your deck or graveyard. Uh, Multi faker is a dark spellcaster. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and and nobody's gonna stop that because everyone's gonna go dark magician. Yeah. So like <laughs> you go like well no because you you'd have to have the uh, the auto ghost on field. Uh, you can't um, even do them with it. <laughs> no, you could probably you could probably set like a seek and then just bait it. Well, I guess if you if you're playing dragoon, you might have dark magician in your deck anyway, just for the spice. Exactly. <laughs> um, there's some other stuff like you could play summon limit, but again, that can kind of slow down your tempo. Um, I spoke about typhoon already. Um, magic deflect is quite a nice one because um, it stops twin twister and cosmic and. Mm different field spells and cursed eldland as well uh if only like it could stop lightning storm or something mm. that'd be great i did see some people playing wire tap for a while before judgment went to three this is like over a year ago at this point yeah i mean we have just lost um, six months uh, of the year so <laughs> yeah i feel that <laughs> like it, the whole year's been wiped out yeah, uh, and there's some people playing Trap Trick as well, because um, with like Compulse and Heavy Storm Dust, there's something that I haven't spoke about. Mm -hmm. um, my only problem with Heavy Storm Duster right now is that it doesn't really deal with Eldritch. Yeah. They just sort of plus off of it, which th this deck has a really good Eldritch matchup, um, surprisingly. Um, it's one of the few control matchups that I think it does have a really good um, game against, because okay. because you can loop everything. While Eldritch's resources are finite, they they have they only have the three sanguine, the the three Eldritch uh, spell, and the quick play spell, or, um, and then three up to three Hikuero and up to three Conquistador. Mm -hmm. They have a finite amount of stuff and three Lord. They can only do so much with it. They only run the one recycle card, right? And like, not everyone even so. really runs it. That's the Guardian one, isn't it? Uh, I can't remember which, which so. name it is. It's like Shuffle 3 back, right? Something like that. I think so, yeah. But yeah, um, most decks yeah. are only running... I think, last I saw anyway, we're only running one, if any. A lot one, even mm -hmm. running the one, I don't think. I could be wrong yeah. with that, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and you've got the new card, uh, Titano Cider, mm -hmm. um, which is it's like a Lost Wind, um, except it, can continue, it doesn't banish itself on resolution. Yeah. Of when it comes back, it just keep, can keep coming back, but it doesn't have the attack uh, modulation. Yeah. Again, Lost Wind is an option as well that you, people you could play. It helps um, as well because you've got small bodies as well, so just another way to yeah to sort it, of protection. Out. Yeah, and also if they attack into Melaseek and you go Lost Wind and like is it? I can't remember if it's half or or reduced to zero. I think it's zero. I could be wrong. Let me just flip through my what, Lost Wind. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Lost Wind's half. Uh, where the fuck is it? Where is it? Um, yeah, it's halved. Yeah. So, yeah. But even then, like, if it's still reducing the amount of damage you're taking, um, stopping their plays. Like, if you, if you do Needle Fiber, then and you flip that, it's, it's really, really strong. Um, this is one of the few decks that can also play um, Dimension Shifter in the side. Oh, shit. Okay. Um. It's again. It's a very high roll card. Um, that because obviously it decreases in value the longer the game goes. Yeah. Um. Because of, uh, you can just discard it and then just not link off the Melaseek. Yeah, that's true. Especially, especially if we're going second, you just ditch that and then like, especially against like Salmon Gray or something, and they they're forced to send something that they don't want to with Gazelle or it lose ends the, their turn. Lose the card. Yeah, especially and like Eld Lich as well. Um, another card that that you could side is Inspector Border. Yeah. Is that if you if you play against Altergeist, Inspector Border just wins. Like it is what it is. <laughs> um, if, if they don't have the out to the border, like there's no in engine out to it, which is the problem. So um, like, you have that in your side. Yeah. So like you could have three in your side. Like the the only out that they have is that if you mess up the zoning of the inspector border yeah. and put it underneath one of the extra monster zones and summon anima um 
and that, that's the only way you can really out it. Um, you've also got like Mystic Mind, for example, the deck. It's really, really easy to out Mystic Mind in ways that people don't really think of. Mm -hmm. So you've got obviously you've got the Trine Chalk, which can board wipe the board, and you just then you just sort of pass. Yeah, and you're laughing. Um, you've also got Kungri, which is this one of the few times where Kungri being a level five actually matters. So say you've got like you've you've made a link for Ebo and then they go Mystic Mine. Mm -hmm. Normally you're screwed. However, if you keep drawing and just wait till you get spoofing plus Kunkery, you can tribute summon the, the Link Rebo. Um, and then during that end phase, you can spoofing away the Kunkery. Ah, so you can clear your board. Yeah, so you can keep clearing your board. Even if you've got multiple cards, you can just keep oh, going okay. with it. Okay. Um, when playing against Alter Guys, because I'm, I'm fairly sure there's going to be some people that want to know how to beat the deck as well, um, saving your Cosmics is super important. Mm hmm. Um, you don't want to blind. It's, it's a general rule. It's like you don't blind MST or Cosmic. Uh, you want to wait until they activate the protocol or the manifestation or the spoofing, and so that it costs them something. Yeah. Because if you um, if you keep trading one for one, eventually the deck's just going to gain advantage out of you mm -hmm. because of how much it, it recurs. But if you can take plus ones out of the deck, it, it loses very quickly. So that's the trick: is not to not to go, shit, they've got backer, let's try and blow it all up. It's go, right, I'm going to wait until you commit to that and then yeah, take care uh, of it. Exactly, yeah. Um, because playing playing patiently against older guys couldn't help as well. Because if, if they don't have any of the, react the stuff that they can just flip, so like the protocol, like the manifestation or the spoofing, they can't really do much during your opponent's turn. If they have strike and you don't use monster effect, like... You just sort of sat there, and there's, there's weird times when playing against older guys where their sets will be strike and torrential, or strike and permanence, or something along those lines. And you just sort of like, if you don't use monster effects and just sort of chill, then it puts you or, in a good position. Yeah, because it, nine times out of ten they'll have the faker in hand as they always do. It's like invoked, always open an invocation. <laughs> just always there. Uh, yeah, and one last thing I, I, I want to talk about is imperm faker. Yeah. Um, because that's such it's such a power play. Yeah. However, um, you've when when doing it, you've got to think about the next turn. Okay. Because it re it requires a lot of resources. Um, and again, if it gets ashed, you just kind of lose. I've had plenty of games where like I've imp fakered and it's been stopped, and it's just sort of gone to shit from there. Because you don't have the follow-up afterwards. Obviously, with having multiple faker, it changes things slightly. Mm. Um, where the one faker isn't as um, crucial. You know you'll see another one sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times when I'll do it in faker, I won't necessarily go for the silk. Because it's not worth it. I'd rather go for the seek and set up the hex deal so I can push them and start breaking boards. Yeah. And that's where experience of the deck comes in, I guess. Yeah, like... And then sometimes I'll sit there with Invaker and just not use it. I'd rather wait till my turn to use it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much Altergeist in a nutshell. Okay, sweet. Well, right. I appreciate it because that was uh, quite a long one, but hopefully uh, our viewers haven't switched off and they've sort of ground through. They don't have to watch it in one sitting, but um, give them an idea of how to play. Um, thank you again for taking the time to record with me i uh, appreciate both of our teams are playing a game of football i would like to know spurs are winning at this stage so you can't break uh, kayfabe you can't break <laughs> uh, our teams are playing against each other he's a united fan um and, and we're doing okay and almost certainly after this goes up we'll have lost like 3-1 uh, and i'll be eating my words so i won't be gloating anymore but there you go that's fashion as always <laughs> always the way um but yeah thank you for taking the time uh, any any last words before we go uh, no, just uh, hopefully we can get back to locals soon and I can get back to winning locals as usual. Winning Which locals? Likes... Yeah. I don't know what locals you, you've you been winning. Not our one. No. I said we can go back to locals. <laughs> I need to make my profit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like looking forward to next year. Hopefully we have more YCSs. Yeah, well. Hopefully you catch me in the US at some point. Yeah, that would be good, after, wouldn't after it? Br after British Airways ruining me. Yeah. Cool. Well, oh. thanks again for taking the time. Uh, appreciate it. If you guys haven't yeah, already, no you should definitely consider it and subscribe right about now. And I will see you in the next one. 
Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.